The first feeling that a person tries to reach while he is praying is the feeling of safety. When you look at a child sleeping on his father's shoulder, you will feel jealous because he is not affected by anything, not by revolutions or how the country is doing or anything. He doesn't even realize that anything is going on and his thinking is unoccupied. He only sees happy dreams while he's on his father's shoulder. He has a sense of safety that we do not. Even though our capabilities are much more than his in terms of culture and mind and all these unimportant things. That's why Jesus said, be converted to children so you can taste the feeling of safety that God intended. Do you feel safe when you pray? Do you pray for that feeling? Do you feel that God has raised you above the world? Or are you praying and leaving the prayer with the same anxiety that you started with? If so, then why did you finish? Keep praying until you reach that feeling, which is the simplest feeling that will move you while you are in your Father's embrace. He is responsible. He is the one who carries your burdens. This is why our Lord Jesus said, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. One of the meanings of righteousness is closeness to God because the person who is running to his father and who is happy because he will pray is the most saturated person with a sense of safety and there is no longer any important thing in the world and that nothing will happen to him as long as he is in his father's embrace. All of this includes faith, because when you say, Our Father who art in heaven, you believe that he is your Father. Faith doesn't mean that we give sermons or talk too much about faith, because it is planted inside us. Do you believe that he is your Father? If so, then why are you sad? Why are you upset? Why do you overthink things as if you do not have a Father? There is a beautiful expression that the Apostle Paul says, which is, My God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Philippians 4.19 All of us, without exception, especially in the past period, need safety. We all feel, feel insecure, especially the past two nights in which there were no police or protection, and we hear shots fired every hour, and we hear about people who this or that happened to them. This is a difficult feeling. How come the police cannot provide that feeling of safety? Because they are also human beings and they cannot provide it. There is a rule regarding safety that I ask you to remember. If you do not believe, you will not be safe. There is no other solution. There is no safety without faith. Faith means inner confidence that he is your father. It means that he can do all things. It means that he does not that he it means that he does the best thing. If your mind and your heart are filled with this confidence, you will receive anything with joy. There is nothing that will worry you, and everything that happens to you, it's good. Isn't he your father? What will he bring upon you other than the best thing? He's not like that father who only thinks about himself. He never does. Do not think that because your father was bad with you that your God will be bad with you as well. No way. Our God is a true, sweet father. My God shall supply all your need. This means prayer imbues a person with the feeling of safety through one meaning or one word, which is our father. If you feel like he's your father, then that's it. That is why it is said that some of the saints who began praying, saying, Our Father, they couldn't finish the rest of the prayer. They park on those words and collect from them. By the way, our church is fully aware of these meanings. What do we say in response to the gospel readings during the big fast? That is, Lent. Most of the news of the gospel is joyful news, and the word gospel itself means joyous news. The most joyful news is that God is our Father. Then you find the church singing and saying, Our Father who art. We sing it, meaning 
we say it in a beautiful way, not like in a race and in vain. It deserves to be said slowly. So we find that the response to the gospel during Lent is, Our Father who art, but with a melody and with a special mood, and slowly to absorb it and understand it is a very beautiful circumstance, and God is our Father. And this is the origin of Lent, that is, to leave the whole world and come to discover what God is your Father means. In the past, the system of Lent was to prepare prepare preachers in the early church when they were fasting, and God was adding to the church every day those who were being saved. Their main concern was to teach people the faith so that they would be baptized. The most beautiful news about baptism is that after you have been baptized, you will say, our Father, that is, God became your Father. You descended into the baptismal waters with your so-and-so as your Father. Then you disavowed him, and he disavowed you, and you came up out of the water with God now as your Father. Of course, those who were baptized while they were old are the happiest people on earth because they understand what it means to be the Son of God. People like us, who were baptized when we were babies, don't appreciate it enough. Our church returns every Lent and reminds us to understand what we mean by the words, Our Father. Leave what is in your hand, leave the food, stop pursuing pleasures, stop thinking too much, and come discover once again that when Jesus incarnated and, incarnated and redeemed us and baptized us, he transported us to being children of God. All our prayers and fasts are a journey to discover that endless meaning. It is a very deep meaning. We know nothing of it. We know, we know it very like superficially. But whenever a person understands it, he's a saint. And he is always joyful and is not anxious over anything. He does not want his prayer to end. Why would he stop? Of course, all feelings are related to each other. I want to say that prayer is just a feeling or a discovery of the tenderness of God the Father or the embrace of the Father. 